Hey everyone, my name's Adam Archer, and today we're going to be taking a look at two SOG automatic knives. This is the SOG SOG TAC, and this is the older version of the knife. It has been produced for, I believe, over 10 years. I've seen some videos going pretty far back um, featuring these knives. These are the older version. Um, the newer versions do have some differences, and I'll point those out in this video. Um, I do have two variations of the knife right here, uh, the first being with a black titanium nitride finish or tie eye, and the other one with a satin finish. Um, they do have a little bit of differences um, other than just the blade finish. You can see the tie eye knife has um, a black or some black hardware such as the pivot as well as the pocket clip as you can see there. In this video, I'm mostly going to be showing the version with the titanium nitride because uh, it's going to be much easier to see on camera. Um, as you can see, this will not focus very well on the satin version, but I will bring that knife back a little bit later um, just so that you can see the blade in a little bit more detail um, and explain some other differences. One of the differences that you may have actually noticed right away um, was the sound of opening. So let's try the titanium nitride and the satin. So the satin version actually makes more of a metal on metal clinking, which makes sense because it has a, what I believe is a stainless uh, stop pin that's going to be hitting that uncoated blade. So you get a more of a clinging versus more of a uh, a clank um, on the tie-nye blade. So, depending on the type of sound you prefer when opening your automatic, you may want to choose a different knife. One of the warnings though, um, I did try to look up the SOG TAC um, just before making this video, and I don't know if they produce a new version of the satin SOG TAC. I'm only seeing them with the titanium nitride finish, um, so you may want to look for maybe a used version if you do like the other sound or the other features of this a little bit better. Um, so you may like the look rather than the sound, but um, I have a rather large switchblade collection. Sound matters as well. Um, so let's take a look at the titanium nitride version. You may be wondering what is titanium nitride. Um, it's a blade finish that comes in a few different colors. I believe its natural color is actually a golden color. Um, I had a buck knife with the natural titanium nitride finish, but I did not bring it over here. Um, but you see it quite often on um, like drill bits. Um, a lot of cheap jewelry has titanium nitride. It is a very hard coating, so that will not scratch off easily like more some more of those painted coatings. Um, it uses a AUS-8A blade steel, uh, well, AUS-8, I don't know if it's A, blade steel that SOG is very well known for. They do know how to heat treat it correctly, although it will be on the softer side at, I believe, 56 to 58 Rockwell. Um, a lot of times you'll be running more uh, 5960 on some more of the harder steels such as um, S30B. Um, the handles are 6061 aluminum which is basically an aircraft aluminum uh, and the older versions have a G10 insert as you can see here. Um, it does say SOG and has a little glow-in-the-dark uh, bullseye right there or um, aiming dot or whatever. Um, the, both the new and the version do have that aiming dot, but only the old versions have this G10 insert. Um, the other ones have just solid aluminum handles, um, as well as the like cuttings in the handles do not have the little... They are completely cut out for the S, rather than having um, the connections at the bottom. And I'll have to zoom in a little bit to show that. So I'll point with this knife, I guess. But you can see that it has a little bit of a connection right there, right there. So on the aluminum version, since it's milled directly into the handle, they don't have that. I do kind of like that appearance a little bit better, uh, having the little 
dashes on the front and bottom. I mean, it's just aesthetics, but I do like that a little bit better. Um, and then, uh, since it's two different materials, I think it looks a little bit neater and gives it a little bit more grip since this is a textured G10. The very center, I did say that it does have a glow-in-the-dark spot. It doesn't last for very long, um, and you really have to shine a light directly on it for a little bit it, for it to glow. So I'll shine it right up my or right at my light, or I'll have my lights charge it, turn them out, and I'll show you that right now. So, okay, and let's get that right in front of the camera. Okay, can't see it on the camera at all. Let's see. Well, that did not work. Whew. So, uh, it's actually not bright enough for my camera to pick up, apparently. So that is a little disappointing. Let's actually change the brightness settings back. Okay, so back to the handle. It does have four finger grooves. If you have skinnier fingers, you're actually not going to be using um, all of those grooves. As you can see, I have little spider fingers, and I actually only use three of them to get a pretty comfortable grip. As you can see there, if I want to grip up, I can also grip a little bit down, but um, it will fit larger hands quite easily, or hands with gloves. On the reverse side here, you do have a deep carry pocket clip, so you're gonna have that pretty deep in your pocket but it does have a lanyard hole if you want to throw a lanyard on there to make it a little bit easier to pull in and out of your pocket. Um, it has a safety button right there, so it will actually lock open or lock closed. This particular model, do, or my particular version, um, you do have to press a little bit harder to get that engaged when the blade is open, but that makes it so you can't depress the um, button to release the blade when it is open. And of course, it can lock it, so you can't press the blade when closed either. It is not a recessed button, so it does stick out a little bit. So you do want to actually use that safety. Um, on a lot of automatics, you'll see if they don't have a safety, they will actually be a little bit um, under the handle. So when I press on that, it um, won't automatically open up because it is actually shallower than the material around it right there. So one thing to keep in mind, when you keep it in your pocket, you do want that safety turned on. Uh, let's see, what else can I talk about? Um, 3.5 inch blade, so it is a very popular blade size. I have a couple other similar knife sizes. Of course, the Benchmade Reflux, is I believe 3.2 inches rather than 3.5. We have the Rat Works. This is a chain driven knife. Um, so let's show a little bit of the speeds of these knives. I'd mark the SOG tack a little bit towards the harder hitting automatic. So we have the SOG tack first. Let's do the Kershaw Auto. I don't remember what model this is. Maybe the the four. I don't know. This one keeps wanting to not lock all the way. We have the Benchmade Mini Reflex. This is the first one, not the second, with the larger spring. And of course, the Rat Works Chain Driven Auto. Right there. This does use. The um, Sulk Tack uses a coil spring, which is very popular for automatic knives, and you can actually see part of the coil spring right there. Um, and if you're not aware of what a coil spring is, it's basically a spring that's been coiled up and is normally right in the pivot, and um, by closing the blade, it compresses the spring. Um, the spring is a little bit pre-coiled, um, and by what I mean, or what I mean by that is that even if the knife does not open all the way, it will, if 
if you depress the button, no matter how little it's or yeah, how, no matter how little it's closed, it will open up completely. Some knives are where they'll if they're a little bit open or if they're a little bit closed, even if you press the button, it won't open the rest of the way. So you want or I like knives that are a little bit coiled already. Uh, just is a little bit more attention to detail. It makes it so if your knife does not open all the way or something gets in the way of the blade, you can just press that knife or that button again to make sure it deploys completely. Um, that is really all I have to say about this knife. So there you go. And it is a 10 minute video, so I think you got your worth out of this. We'll just do a little bit of a high detail. And of course, I'll get the satin version out in a second and try to show you that. I'll probably also try to show the glow in the dark one more time before the end of this video. I don't remember if I mentioned, but it is a closed back, so that will make it a little bit more difficult to clean. So this is basically two pieces of aluminum, no backspacer or barrels. Um, compared to, um, I don't actually have any automatics right here with a open back. This cap has some openings on it, but it is just two pieces of aluminum on the Kershaw as well. I did forget to mention this that this is made in the USA as well. Most automatics that you'll be able to buy in the USA are USA made though. Um, and now for satin version. I actually bought both of these from an estate auction. It's the first auction I'd ever gone to. Maybe, I don't know what the best way to show this would be. So there's the flats and the grinds. Oh, almost shoved my elbow directly into another knife I had to the side. Of course, it has the patent listed on there. Let's see if I can show it like that. Man. Very nice and shiny. And it does look like they brush this only in one direction, so you do get a nice um, satin finish on there. As you can see, all the polish is going this direction on the flats and then it looks like normal grind line style polishing on the um, belly of the blade. Ooh, that is messing with the camera's focus. Anyways, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about these. If you already own them, somebody you know owns them. I always like comments in the comments section. <sighs> Anyways, more automatic knife videos will be coming. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.